Hi, this is Yvonne Prin, and I'm going to show you how to create a custom website nameplate with Microsoft Publisher. Now, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to go from the plain, basic, generic custom nameplate to something like this. You will not believe how simple it is. Now, you do it different ways with different websites, and I'm not going to get into this, uh, into the whole website thing on this tutorial. But let me just say this website was created in WordPress and I'm going to be doing a number of tutorials on WordPress. But what you do when you go into it, you can change this. The first thing you have to do though, whatever program you're working in, is you have to find out the size that you need. Now even though we can resize this and use it in other publications for the web, you have to know the exact size and you have to build it that size. That size is always given in pixels. So in your particular program, you'll go into that, you will find out what the pixel size is, write that down, and then let's get into, right away, get into Publisher, and I will show you how to create this. Okay, now we're in Microsoft Publisher, and it really doesn't matter what you pick to start out with because you're going to have to modify it right away. You just need to be able to pick something so that you have access to all of the menus in the toolbar. I just clicked on a plain page, but like I say, it doesn't matter what it is because the first thing that you need to do is you need to change your, um, your rulers from inches to pixels. To do that, you go up to the Tools menu, down to Options, then you see inches comes up and couldn't be easier, you change it to pixels and we click OK. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to need to change this to the custom size for our header. We can close out this little sidebar here and the next thing we want to do is we want to go over under the file menu. We are now going to go down to page setup. Then you see right in the middle of this menu is something that says custom. Go ahead and click on that. And then you see we've changed our measurements to pixels, so that's, that's what it's in. Now go ahead and type in your measurements. I've written them down what I needed on my website. It is 740 by 192. Now, before I hit enter and I hit OK, let me warn you what's going to happen. You will very briefly see four banner images show up on this um, preview thing here. Don't worry about that. Uh, you are actually only creating one website header. That's all you'll end up with. This is just something that Publisher does, but it can kind of throw some people off if they don't know that it's going to happen. So we click OK, and then right away it takes us into our publication. Now, this is our website header, and let's go ahead and build our, um, our custom header. I'm going to insert a picture from my file and I have to admit my files are just really messy. I, I wish I had them a little better organized but I don't. Um, so these are this is actually my real computer. Um, so let me just go ahead and put in the image that I have. Now as you can see, whoo, it's really big. I got this off of morgue file and a lot of the ones that you download from the free services on the web, and I'll be giving you the websites in, in just a little bit, they can end up being really big. So you have to size it down. So we'll just uh, take a corner of it, click on the shift key, and we're just going to size it down because we want it to fit on our banner. Well, we can see we get it about the right size, but then it's too little and whatever. Now I've played around with this ahead of time, so I know this works, but all you have to do for this particular image, this doesn't work for all of them, but it does for this one, is size it up there and then just make it fit our whole image. And to me, I actually like this. This was a crown of thorns and I actually like it this size better even, even than the other one. So uh, that's all there is to that for the background image. Now then, we, the name of our uh, website for the Easter season is Jesus is the reason for the Easter season. So let's put in the word Jesus. Now for this, 
I'm going to use word art. Now, this is this is another really kind of fun thing that I just started doing. I used to just hate word art. I thought it was so tacky and silly and crummy looking and stupid and all that kind of stuff. You know, these flying words and all this kind of stuff. And so I used to make fun of it, which I'm sure some of you may have done. But then I realized if you use it in a controlled way, and it can really look neat. It can really look classy. And having worked on all sorts of things in Photoshop to get it to do what I wanted to, let me tell you, WordPress is really simple. This one I, I like quite a bit. It, it ends up looking really nice. So you just click on um, that particular one. And... Um, it says type in your text, and I'm just going to put in Jesus. Now, impact is nice, but I've tried some different ones ahead of time, and I really like Tribuchet better. Um, it doesn't really matter what you pick. You can try all kinds of different ones. I have found, though, that the ones that are a little bit more bold, um, they just look better when you do them up in um, the word art. Okay, Tribuchet, and I'm going to make it actually bold, and then click Okay, now you think, well, that's kind of little and not all that great, and we really want it to go across here and all that. Well, that's what's so neat about word art, because word art, remember, takes your text and makes it into a graphic. So you just resize it. It is so easy. Um, and you can make it a little bit taller if you wanted. You want to make it a little bit, um, a little bit more narrow. You know, just whatever you want to do couldn't be easier. And again, you can do the same sort of thing in Photoshop. But let me tell you, it is not quite that easy. Um, in another uh, video, I'll show you how you can do more with changing the colors and the gradations and all that. But this is just great as is. And we're focusing on how to do the nameplate right now. But look at that. That looks nice. That looks great. Now we want to put the line below it is the reason for the Easter season. And all we have to do on that is just draw a text block and is the reason for the Easter Easter season. Okay, now of course we don't want it in black because we can't see it. So let's go ahead and make that a nice gold color to match um, our uh, Jesus there. And I'm also going to Make it all lowercase, and because I did that, I'm going to, um, under the tools, under the spelling, say hide spelling errors. Now, of course, that's too little, so let's just make it bigger, and let's italicize that. And let's see, there's going to be one here. Okay, Jesus is the reason for the Easter season. I'm going to actually make my Jesus, just a little bit bigger. And that's all there is to that. Let's now look at it by removing the rulers and guides. Ta-da! We're done. Now you're thinking, okay, that's fine, but how do we get this from publisher file to website? So glad you asked. You won't believe how easy this is. We now go up under our file menu and under save. And I'm just going to leave it publication one because I've already done a number of these and I've got them saved. But notice this, under the saving, see there's all these different publisher files that you can save it as. And if you go on down, you can save it in Word and Works and all that. But what many people don't realize is if you keep going down this list, look at this, you can save it as either a JPEG file or a PNG file, which works beautifully on the web. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a JPEG. Not only that, you can also, if you're just doing it for the web, you can go up here to your resolution, click on this, another dialog box comes up. You could save it for the web at 96 DPI. If you just do it at 150, it'll work great for the web and for print, or you can do it for commercial printing. I, nine times out of ten when I'm doing something, save it for the middle one. That way I don't have to um, have different res resolutions for both. But you could change it if you wanted to. Just click OK and click Save. Whatever. Um, and that's all there is to that. You now have a wonderful, resizable graphic that you can use on the web, in print, however you want to use.
Let me show you some examples. Here are some examples of what you can do when, with your finished graphic. Because it um, is a resizable JPEG graphic, you can use it medium size, little. Here is actually a screenshot of taking the graphic and putting it on the website. Fits beautifully. But again, because it's just a JPEG graphic, you can use it in all kinds of other ways. We can use it to make a coordinated theme for, say, for Easter. Here I've done up, sort of just mocked up a postcard, a business invitation card. You can use it just any way you want to on anything that you can imagine. Really easy, really fun to do. Let me show you another very practical thing that I did. Um, our church uh, wanted to revitalize its small group ministry and my husband and I said we'd help doing that and you know all of you you work at churches you know what it's like I had a week to put together a website a logo and all the curriculum on it so I thought oh my goodness and that's in all honesty how I learned how to do this because I just didn't have time to mess with Photoshop and all that and I learned how to do this in Publisher and um, the name of it was already decided. They call it the small group links. Um, I, again, this was just a free image that I actually modified in Snagit, which I will again be doing another video to show you how to do that. I created the logo. I created the nameplate for the website. And I also, and you can see this on the website, I put the URL there so you can go to it if you want to. I also, doing the same thing, you can create sidebar banners, yeah, advertisements, little slogans, whatever you want to do, you can do them in Publisher also. And once again, so many companies will try to charge you a lot of money or sell you specialized programs, all that. You don't need that. You can do all those things in Publisher, save it as a JPEG, and it works. There are just endless uses for this system. It is really neat, and I will be doing more uh, tutorials on it because, in all honesty, I'm just having so much fun with it. Um, for images, sources of free images, RGB Stock, this is a fairly new company that's come up, and they've got some great stuff. Stock Exchange, the morgue file, that's where I got the uh, crown of thorns at completely free. You can use them for anything. You can make logos, uh, themes for communications, book covers. I'm actually working on a video right now that will be ready in a few days to show you how to create um, resizable book covers with Lulu and, and other companies that um, this same system. And then with one image, you have the book cover. You have the image for advertising for your website, for PR, everything. It's all done. Your imagination is the only limit to what you can do by creating resizable graphics with little old Microsoft Publisher. Have fun.